Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. I don't know about you guys, but I watch a lot of tech tube. I watch Linus Tech Tips and Bitwit and Greg Salazar and all of them. And I found myself getting a little disenchanted with the space. Some of those YouTubers or who are tech tubers, right, that mainly focus on PCs have found some great niches. Greg Salazar's got his series where people send him PCs and he tries to fix them and he goes on Craigslist and stuff like that. But others have not. They just kind of report the news and then they build a PC. And every time they build a PC, sure, like they've got the latest components, but they're building these kind of cookie cutter machines. You know, oh, we're gonna use whatever the closed loop liquid cooler of the day is. We're gonna use NZXT H510 for the case. You know, we're gonna build in the absolute most over the top unrealistic motherboard, regardless of the CPU we're using. I don't know, it just, it seems a little boring. So you get a lot of plain Jane builds. And when I build computers, I like to put some uniqueness or find some uniqueness to put in there, whether it's, you know, some paint or some graphics. But one of the other things that I pride myself in is finding unusual components. I'll sit on AliExpress uh, until three o'clock in the morning, lurking through the bowels of the PC parts just to try to find something unique or that I've never seen before so that I can buy it and try it out. So we're gonna do a series called Chris's Crazy Coolers. And these aren't all totally wild or wacky, but uh, they're relatively unheard of or unknown coolers that I have purchased throughout the years or that I've seen recently and I'm gonna unbox them and show you a little bit about the cooler, do a quick review and a quick benchmark, and uh, kind of share with you what, I, what my thoughts are about each particular cooler so you can make a decision for yourself. So we're gonna do everything from super cheap $8 uh, LGA 1700 coolers to 60 to $70 wacky looking turbine coolers and things like that. I think it'll be fun. Our first victim is going to be the Alzai M90. I picked this CPU up on Amazon. It was $39.99. I, I grabbed it mainly because of the design. It darn near looks like it would be fanless. Um, it's not, it does have a, a small fan in there. It's basically a, a, a what you would normally consider a twin tower, but it's all one piece and then the fan goes down in the center. We've got four six millimeter heat pipes, uh, 92 millimeter fan, Poles 0.11 amps. It says creative twin tower minimal, minimalist design. Integrated twin tower radiator with fan inside, not only for better appearance, but also smaller size, compatible with most of the chassis motherboard. Uh, I did already take it out and mount it. I took some footage of me taking it apart. The long and short of it that I'll give you here, and I'll put some graphics up on the screen so you can see. Hi there, editor Chris here. I'm about to go on a rant for a couple of minutes about the technical details of this cooler. If you're not interested, go to six minutes and three seconds to uh, cut to the benchmarks. So you see the top of this? This has an LED strip and it's got a fan glued into it, okay? Which normally would not be a problem. The problem is where it comes to the mounting mechanism for the top. So what they did is they just ran machine screws down into this. They ran the machine screws down into the fin stack, <laughs> which is just an absurd idea. I mean, I get what kind of what they were going for. The problem is you're assuming that the screw, that this type of screw, this little machine screw is gonna be able to grab a bite from fin to fin all the way as it goes up. When in reality, what it does is it just strips itself out. So what you really have to do to get the screw out is you have to sit there with this still installed. You've got to pull up on it while you're unscrewing to put tension on the screw for it to come out of the hole. That is how you get the top off. It's just beyond absurd to me. I don't know whose right idea this was, the way you do this properly is you run a, you, you either put inserts in for your screws to screw into, plastic inserts, that's not that hard. You can do like a heat mold type situation so that the screws have something to bite on. Or what would really be best 
is if they fitted a metal cylinder and then ran a tap through it so that you have actual, you know, something for the screw to bite into. They did run a tap through, but they just ran it through the bare fins. And guess what? The screw just slips right out of the tap because these fins can flex and move. They're not stable. They've got nothing. You, they, they don't push up against anything. Give me a break. So yeah, unfortunately, this is all all show and no go. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. So anyway, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks. All right, so here we are. I've adjusted the lighting a little bit so you can get a better idea of the lighting effects and how they look. Uh, we've got our base test system here. This is a Ryzen 5 5600X with a B550M Prime motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and an RTX 3070. What I've done here is pulled up hardware monitor and lin pack. And because I figured Linpack is probably a good way to see how, how the heat's gonna work out. Now, mind you, this is only a 65 watt CPU, even with precision boost enabled, it's still not gonna draw a ton of wattage. So if this CPU cooler can't keep up with a Ryzen 5 5600X, we're basically gonna stop the testing there. If it does hold on, then we'll try the 5800X and maybe the 5950. All right, our current CPU temperature, as you can see here, is 31 degrees. We've got Linpack 1.15 up right here, and we're gonna go ahead and run the standard Linpack benchmark. Also, I did, like I said, I turned on Precision Boost Overdrive. I also set the CPU fan profile to turbo. I know if you're benchmarking, you might wanna put the fan on max, but I don't think that having the fan on max is an ideal situation for this particular CPU cooler. I don't think it was really meant for that. So I'm just gonna run it on turbo and we'll see how loud it gets. Let's go ahead and go here. Benchmark. We'll do the extended. And we'll run it twice. And there it goes. 69, 78. 79. So it basically shot straight up to 80 degrees right from the start. So not a lot of thermal mass, and unfortunately that poor, <laughs> that poor 92 millimeter fan just can't hack it. I don't feel any air coming out of here hardly at all. Not terribly impressed. And it looks like it's holding at 81 Celsius, which is a good sign. I think uh, 81 Celsius is, is not bad. You can see down here, our cores are pretty well pegged. They backed off a little bit by about 100 megahertz. They're fluctuating between like the high 4.5 gigahertz, like 4.59, all the way up to 4641. So that's about as fast as you're gonna get out of a 5600X CPU without doing some serious dialing in of settings, which in this case, we're kind of going for more of like a practical application standpoint than a, you know, a maximum worst case scenario standpoint. 1.2 volts on the uh, V core there. Not too bad. And we are well over 65 watts. And I know the dissipation wattage and everything isn't always equal, but our max wattage on the CPU for the, for the whole package looks like 112 watts, 95 for the cores, definitely more than 65. And that's it. Would I recommend this CPU cooler? No, not even a little bit. Uh, it was an absolute bear to get installed. The installation hardware is cheap and hard to work with. I'll give them credit for using the AMD stock backplate. At least that made things a little bit easier. But overall, it was not a good experience. And then one other thing, and I'll see if I can get you in a little bit closer here. If you watch closely with the lights, let's see if I can it does it here. I notice it does this odd thing sometimes where it flickers, and I can't seem to figure out why. I'll put some footage up if it doesn't do it here, but I'll, I'll show you here now. It, it, it flickers really badly and, and it happens at random intervals where like the LCD controller in the CPU cooler just kind of decides to throw a flip and fit. And I feel like that's a quality control issue. Like for $40, it's not a, a terrible buy. There are certainly worse coolers you can get for 40 bucks. But then again, 
you know, if you're if you're an AMD guy or you're buying a Ryzen 5 or even an i5 CPU, it comes with a CPU cooler. So it's like, yeah, you're gonna spend that extra forty dollars. I feel like if you're gonna spend that extra forty dollars, you should expect, you know, at least decent, you know, decent uh, noise floor and decent build quality, and to not have issues with things like uh, LED controllers. I mean, this Asus Prime B550M, this is one of the most popular motherboards on the market, and Asus has done a really good job with AuraSync. I feel like they could have done a better job. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, we've got more to come. I'm actually getting ready to test out another CPU cooler right now, and I'll have that video out in a couple days. I've also still got retro stuff on the way from VCF, so hang in there for me. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.